Australians are leaving money on the table. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to maximize your investment returns and minimize the mistakes when building a property portfolio. I'm also going to share with you some real life examples of how we've helped clients build a property portfolio and how Emily and I have been able to build our asset base to create more choices in our life. So let's start out with some of the mistakes investors make when looking to build a property portfolio. The first one I'm seeing a lot of is analysis paralysis. People are bombarded by my videos, by hundreds and thousands of YouTube videos out there today, news articles, what's going on in the economy, the list goes on. There is so much information available at people's fingertips. Now it's a matter of deciphering this information, putting it in a clear and concise order, and working out how to take the next step in building your property property portfolio. It's very difficult for people who get stuck in this analysis phase to jump out of it and take action. And that's really what you need to do. You need to analyze, but you also need to do the thing. You need to take action in buying the property or taking the next step in terms of building your serviceability or building your savings to work towards your goal of building your property portfolio. Emily and I have been very good at not being paralyzed by our situation. We've always looked at how we could take the next step and we're usually planning two or three or even four steps ahead in building our property portfolio. A real example of this was saving $66,000 to buy our first property with the view of buying our second investment property. We wanted to work out how our first property could help us get to our second. And our strategy was to use renovation and buy in a blue chip location to add value in the short short term to then pull out equity and buy that next investment property. And this is exactly what we did. We bought our first home for around $800,000, spent about $30,000 on the renovations. We were able to pull out equity and buy the Baby Queenslander, which was our next renovation series here on YouTube. So look at how you need to take your next step and don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Another costly mistake I see people making all the time is not doing the research and not getting the advice. Now, Emily and I paid for an advisor to buy our first property. We actually found our first property, but they helped us with the negotiations. We paid about a $10,000 fee for their services, but we almost made a mistake in the negotiations and offering too much. So paying for someone's service can absolutely be worth it if it's the right fit for you you need to look at the value proposition. If you're looking at our services here in Southeast Queensland, you need to weigh up whether the fees are worth the value. So say you're buying a property for under $700,000. We charge a fee of 12,500, including GST, to help you acquire the asset here in Southeast Queensland. Our fee is split 4,400 up front and 8,100 on success. So in that situation, you need to work out whether that fee is worth the cost to you. The other thing to note is buyer's agent fees are added to the cost base of a property. So if you buy a property for $500,000 and you use our services here at Purpose Property, it's like you paid $512,500 to purchase that asset. So it forms part of the capital cost of that property. So many people get stuck on paying a fee for service or spending money to build their education and build their knowledge. Emily and I have spent money on courses, spent money on books, spent money on professionals as we built out our property portfolio. You need to build yourself a team. Whether you think you need a buyer's agent or not, that's up to you, but you also need to pay for lawyers, accountants, property managers, find the right mortgage broker. So build the team around you and rely on others' expertise to help build your property portfolio. Another common issue is diversification. So how do I plan my property portfolio? Do I go for growth? Do I go for cash flow? Do I buy in one hot market, you know, Southeast Queensland or Perth at this point in time? Or should I buy in my local area? You need to look across Australia, in my opinion, and work out what's right for you. What is your strategy in building your property portfolio? So for Emily and I, we were very bullish and continue to be very bullish on the Southeast Queensland market. I think there's very strong growth here over the next 10 plus years. And that's why Emily and I have put three and a half million dollars of assets in the Southeast Queensland market. In saying that, we also bought in Coffs Harbour. Now that's a major regional town, but that was more of a cash flow play for us, as well as value add potential on the unit block we bought there. So you need to work out for yourself. Are you going to go for capital growth first? Are you going to go for cash flow? And what locations do you want to buy in to manage your land tax, to manage your diversification as well? 
So those are some common mistakes Australians are making when it comes to building their property investment portfolio. And they're leaving money on the table by not taking action, by not using the right professionals and not choosing the right locations to diversify and build their asset base. So let's talk about how you can do the right things, how you can build a multi-million dollar property portfolio and maximize your returns. You've probably heard this over and over again, but property is a game of finance. You need to be able to understand the finances to build that property portfolio. How do you boost your serviceability? How do you deal with different lenders? And how can you maximize your asset base to get that compounding return on a higher dollar value? Now, this is my background as a chartered accountant. I used to work as an auditor and then as a commercial accountant. So my background in accounting gives me a massive advantage being a CA and understanding the finances and working with brokers and working with banks to build that portfolio. In our own example, Emily and I were able to maximize our leverage by working with the banks. And when a bank said no to us, we wouldn't take no for an answer and we go find another mortgage broker. Go find someone that was more investment savvy and wanted to understand our situation situation even as we became more complex. Even recently, we've been working with Baxter Hill from Woodrow Finance, and he was able to save us thousands of dollars each year, over $20,000 on our unit block by refinancing from Pepper Money back over to Commonwealth Bank of Australia. So work with an investment savvy mortgage broker, understand your financials, and that means looking at your income, looking at your expenses, seeing what your serviceability is, and then taking action based on your serviceability. If you don't have the money there, you can't buy any property. So work out how you can maximize your serviceability, whether it's getting a pay rise, whether it's cutting back on expenses, and then look to invest your money into the property market for those compounding returns. Now to actually get those returns, you need to choose the right asset. So we look at five key things when it comes to buying the right property. You look at price, we look at strategy, we look at suburbs, we look at property specifics and red flags. So using that $500,000 example, say you've got a borrowing capacity of 600K. You therefore need to potentially buy a property around that five to 550 mark. You wanna look at the price, then you wanna look at the strategy. So are you going for capital growth or are you going for cash flow or are you going for a mix of both? Once you know your price, once you know your strategy, then we're down to the suburb level. So narrow down to six to 10 suburbs that you think meet your buying criteria. Then we wanna look at property specifics, so bedrooms, bathrooms, land size, value add potential. And finally, you wanna avoid red flags. So you don't wanna buy in a flood prone area or an area that's got too much commercial or industrial properties in there. So take a look at those five key areas to make the right asset selection. Now, anyone who's watched my channel before will know I like to talk about levers. So once you've gone through maximizing your serviceability and working with the banks and you've made your asset selection, the last thing I like to talk about in maximizing your returns is pulling levers. Now, Emily and I like to pull a renovation lever in the short term where we can manufacture value. So spend say 35K and double that money or spend 80K and double that equity creation or long-term levers where we've got future development potential. For example, the block in Coffs Harbour could be knocked down and rebuilt into an apartment block. Or could we do a subdivision? Or could we do a granny flat, which is a very popular strategy here in Southeast Queensland. You need to look at the levers or value add potential when you're making a property purchase. The reason is it's great to buy the right asset in the right location, but you also want to fast track your journey. I myself didn't want to buy and build a property portfolio and have to continue working 40 hours a week in an office job, not being able to spend time with my kids and my family, and not being able to travel and build my own business. So to get out of that, I wanted to fast track our journey by pulling those levers. So every property that Emily and I have bought has been a renovation. We've added value, pulled out equity and gone again. So for yourself, look at the levers you can pull in your property portfolio. Maybe it's a minor cosmetic renovation in the initial instance where you spend twenty dollars to $50,000. We actually offer in-house renovation management here at Purpose Property for clients only. We'll eventually look to go to the wider market and offer that service broader. But at this point in time, Emily and I are running in-house renovations for clients and we charge a 20% management fee. So if you wanna be hands off, and you're one of our clients, we could do a $50,000 renovation project, charge a $10,000 management fee, and it's end-to-end -end done for you. We handle the trades, we handle the quotes, we handle the choices, 
it's stress-free. And the idea of those renovations is to double the value. So if we're spending $60,000, we wanna create somewhere between 100 to $150,000 of uplift in the property, which is why we focus on cosmetic renovations, because these are renovations that people can see and make a tangible difference both to the value of the property as well as increasing the rent in the home. Once you've looked at short-term levers in terms of renovation, now it's time to look at those longer-term levers. So look at the subdivisions, look at the granny flats, look at the future development potential. Whether you realize that potential or not, buying a property with the potential has inherent value because those assets are scarce. So if you can get a larger block at seven, 800, 1,000 square meters plus, then buying the potential can be a great investment strategy to give you options in the future. So as I promised you at the start, let me give you a real example of a client who's done this with us recently. One of our clients purchased a property with us six months ago for $540,000. We managed his project for $35,000 including our fees to create value through a cosmetic renovation. The asset he bought was on over a thousand square meters. It was a low set brick and tile home with drivable side access on a very large block. The $30,000 renovation after working with mortgage brokers and getting the property revalued after three months had an uplift to $600,000, which means he doubled his money in terms of the renovation spend. This meant that our client could come back and work with us again and we offer a $1,000 discount for repeat clients. So this client has actually come back, signed up with us and bought their second property and taken action again. The second purchase is a similar strategy. This time they purchased at a slightly higher price point, buying at $600,000. And again, looking to spend somewhere between 20 to $40,000 on a cosmetic renovation to uplift the value, get an increased rent, and they bought a large block again, so over 800 square meters this time with the ability to add a granny flat in the future. So if you're interested in buying that type of asset here in the Southeast Queensland market, head over to purposeproperty.com.au to book in a free strategy session with myself. We'll have a chat, talk about your situation, talk about the services that we provide and leave some time for some questions as well. So if you're interested, head over to our website and book in a free strategy session there. Otherwise, I hope you've gotten lots of value out of this YouTube video. If you could drop a like on this video, that would really help me out. And click this playlist over here to see recent client example purchases here in the greater Brisbane market. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.